once you've finished creating your sculpture and you're ready to take it into Unreal Engine, there are a few final considerations you should make. The first consideration is you want to check the geometry to make sure that it's made up entirely of three-sided faces. I made a torus in Rhino to illustrate a problematic piece of geometry. So this uh, do torus is made up of all four-sided mesh faces and if you import this directly into Unreal Engine it can cause errors during the import process. It, it really, um, everything on Unreal Engine has to have three-sided faces. So you could, if you were going to send this out from Rhino, you could run the triangulate mesh command and see that it breaks it into the three-sided faces. Now I took that same four-sided mesh and I imported it to Mesh Mixer. And you can see during the import process to Mesh Mixer, it went ahead and turned those four-sided faces all into three-sided faces. So I think seeing that, you're unlikely to run into any problems, but it's still a good thing to be aware of uh, going forward as we start to use Rhino later this semester. Another thing that you'll want to watch out for as you're getting ready to send your geometry over is you want to make sure that your forms are turned into uh, volumetric solids rather than just single surfaces. So this is a uh, kind of a, an ellipsoid form and you can see that it uh, has these um, pink stripes on the interior showing that we're looking at back faces. Now if we go to Unreal Engine and take a look at a rock that is set up similarly uh, with, with an open back, um, uh, you can see that it doesn't display properly from the back side. So if you want for this sculpture uh, you know, suppose that this is a very simple sculpture. If you want this form to be seen in Unreal from the back side, you need to close it up somehow. So the simplest way would be to go to Analysis and then Inspector and click Auto Repair All. And once that's done computing, it caps off the back. But in this case, let's suppose that we actually want for um, to want for this form to be open on the interior. The way we could do that is we could press Control A to select all the faces and then go to Edit and where is the button? Offset. And <clears throat> now um, let's go to the Connected button, make sure that that box is checked and Let's make this negative 10 instead and see if we can get it to go toward the inside. Connected, preserve boundary, preserve groups, accuracy. Turn this up a little bit and accept. Uh, it gave us a little bit of fuzziness around the edge. Uh, we could go back and clean that up with our sculpting brush if we want to by just pressing 2 on the keyboard, holding shift, and then um, going over those areas. Let's take a look at another example. So um, this is another kind of uh, primitive example of a, a sculptural form. And uh, we could close this open part of the bottom. Uh, we could close this up by going to Analysis, Inspector, and click Auto Repair All. However, if we press Control V on the keyboard, you can see that we have these overlapping surfaces. So the sphere extends down into the sculptural form and vice versa. That torus also is kind of embedded into the form. And what I worry about is that because these things are all overlapping, that um, Unreal Engine could get confused about what's supposed to be inside and outside, and then it could end up um, giving us um, places where you could like see through the sculpture. So another way that we could fix this is by going to Edit, Make Solid, and then what Make Solid is doing is it's voxelizing the form, and so it's, it's um, using a kind of a three-dimensional grid to check for presence or absence, and depending on how high you set these sliders, uh, it will change the, um, the resolution of that grid. So the higher up you set these sliders, the, um, the greater the density of those voxels. So once we're happy with 
how our object looks, we can click on Accept. But then if I press W on the keyboard to turn on wireframe mode, look at how much heavier our new geometry is than the old geometry. Now, this gets to be a concern in Unreal Engine because every triangle, um, every triangulated face that we have on the form is going to um, put a demand on the processor and um, on the memory and the GPU. So um, if you look in the lower right hand corner, you can see how even this sculpture has 300,000 faces. That's quite a lot. So we would want to step down the complexity of the geometry, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Um, let's take a look at this sculptural form that I imported from 3dscans.com. So I downloaded this form, and you can see in the lower right-hand corner that the um, imported geometry has 2 million triangles. And we could take this into Unreal Engine, uh, we could probably get it to import correctly, but what I'd be concerned about is that when you look toward this form in VR, that your frame rate would, would go quite low and it could cause simulation sickness for the viewer. And so what we can do is in Mesh Mixer, if we select the form uh, and we reduce it by 90%, we could get this result. So this one uh, on the left has 2 million faces reduced by 90%, this has 200,000 faces. If we take this form and reduce it all, uh, again by 90%, we get this face, uh, this form here rather, that is 20,000 faces. So um, you wanna find a happy medium that has enough complexity in the geometry, but not so much as to overwhelm the, the system resources. If, if I were picking between these two, um, seeing how uh, we're losing some pretty important details on the shield and on the figure's face and uh, on his um, on his arms. I would probably go somewhere between 200,000 faces and 20,000 faces with the resolution. Now, um, let me actually show you how you can reduce the, the complexity of the geometry. Uh, if we select this and then we go to Control A to select all the faces, and then come up top to edit and reduce. Now, um, I find it not very helpful to use this slider because it updates every time you change it by even 1%. So um, I would take this um, percentage amount and highlight it and just enter a new number. So let's choose 80%, press enter. And you can actually see that it went ahead and it made some changes to the geometry there. So you can actually just play with this slider and get it to where it looks ideal and then press accept. And that will show you, uh, let's press escape to deselect. So this is what um, the same form looks like at 40,000 faces.